The California Youth Authority hereby declares Austin Osotonu cannot be rehabilitated. That's what the judge stated. They basically just gave up on me, and I was only 17. I was only in the sixth grade when I started selling drugs. At the age of 14, I started hanging around gang members, and by the age of 17, I got, uh, I got arrested for assault with a firearm. Uh, at the age of 23, I blew up a bank. Um, I sold dynamite to a bunch of guys that actually blew up the courthouse, and I got booked for all those bombings. 27 charges, 17 consecutive life sentences, 425 years without parole. That's what I was facing. I had three kids at that time, and, um, and I was married. And my wife and family would have to basically go on without me. Even during my prison term, things didn't really change much. It was, I was still the same person. I, I still ended up selling drugs. I was, uh, I was selling cell phones, tobacco. If it was illegal and it made money, I did it. This is uh, part of my rap sheet. So just a, a brief of some of the stuff I've been through. This is what they said I smuggled. And this is like heroin, um, crystal meth, joints. So that's, that's, how, uh, that's how we lived in there. That's pretty much how money was made. But when they told me uh, I wasn't rehabilitatable, uh, uh, they were right. Like, I was beyond all hope. I pretty much did lose hope. That's pretty much why I still continue to do what I did. You know, the, the worst part for me while I was in prison was watching my kids grow up. And I watched them grow up in photos. Like, even when I had Caleb while I was in prison, I thought things would change. It didn't. 18 years passes by and I finally, uh, finally, finally see the light at the end of the tunnel. And at that time, I actually was back in the church I stopped doing a lot of things that was preventing me from getting out because I was like really, you know, close to home. I had like maybe two years left and I wanted to make sure I can get out to be with my wife and kids. You know, they, they waited all these years and, and then um, I got the news of my mother. That drunk driver killed her. And then I just basically gave up, just told God I was cool with you. I was really pissed at God. After 20 years, I was finally released. And still, nothing had changed. The transition was hard. Um, so trying to adjust was, was hard. So I ended up getting caught up again in that old life. I started hustling again. After all these years, I still couldn't move forward. I was stuck until my son brought me to Vive. When I first came to Vive, it was actually I like the people, the atmosphere, but when I, but during worship, I just, I don't know, it just felt different. Like you just, you felt like it was right. You know, like this is, this is it. I would come to vibe with the drugs. <laughs> every, every, every time I was here, I had drugs in my pocket and it wasn't for the hustle or to sell it. It was just to get rid of the drugs on my own accord. I just couldn't do it. I started serving and I was asked to build a stage and I actually was building this stage at uh, the Christmas Hub. And I walk in and there, you know, uh, during worship and I, I don't know, something happened. I just know that I, I, I uh, huh. I felt different. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting to experience anything, but I, I just started crying. And I just started worshiping God. My hands went up like, really? What's my hand doing up here? Like I didn't, I was crying like a baby and I couldn't stop crying. And um, I reached into my pocket uh, with my wife sitting uh, in a chair and I pulled out a wad of drugs and I just turned around and I told her I couldn't do this anymore. And I, and I told her I was sorry. 
And I asked her if she would take it and flush it, flush it in the toilet. That was it. I just, everything changed that day. And then finally I got baptized. <laughs> Things did change, but it was like I was still struggling. And, you know, my home life had already been like, it'd been chaotic. And I was on drugs still from PTSD, so because I, I was diagnosed with that. So I was taking psych meds. As I started getting more involved into Vibe, things started changing. And I was getting more involved in projects that I was asking to, you know, I was asking to do. And things really just got better for me. I stopped taking them pills. I didn't need them anymore. And I don't know, my wife and I, we just started praying and reading and as of recent, my family's life has gotten better and I actually have peace at home and I'm at more at peace than I ever been. And I can only see that things are gonna get better. I mean, we're not perfect, but we don't argue and fight like we used to, even with my kids. I remember Caleb didn't even, he like, yeah, I don't wanna go. I don't wanna go to the church. But you know, he comes here more often now and he can't wait to join Box Gen. Everything I do now, doing volunteer work here, Man, that's just, uh, it's another way of my offering to God for what he's done for me. I built this big stage, but when I, when I see people's lives going in, uh, to that altar, to that stage that I built, that brings a smile to my face. I built that, that altar. I built that for you, God, and that's enough for me. My entire life, I've always hustled, and I've tried to, to stop on my own accord. I mean, there's many a times I've tried to stop. But now with God, I can be a husband, a father, a brother, a friend, and a man that God wants me to be. Finally, my family and I can move forward. <laughs>